Today in our 2014 Nissan Maxima, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, part number 56022. So here's what our wiring looks like once we have it installed. It's going to provide us a 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, which is going to give us all the required lights to get safely down the road, like our tail lights, turn signals, and our brake lights. Now I do want to mention that we did mount our wiring on the outside with these two brackets that are not included, but you can pick them up at eTrailer.com. The wiring is designed to stay on the inside of the car, and you would open the trunk and drop it down. Now regardless if you do choose to put it on the outside like we did here, or leave it on the inside, it's going to be a relatively simple installation. We're not going to have to worry about splicing into our factory wiring or cutting anything behind our taillights because it's just going to be a simple T-connector that's going to connect in line with our taillights. And our converter box is going to be powered directly by the battery which is going to put less strain on our factory wiring and it's going to convert all the signals to a working signal for our trailer. It's also fuse protected and everything we need to get it installed is included in the kit. So now that we've seen what it looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to, need to remove all the floor coverings in our trunk. So we'll start by removing the carpet, as well as the spare tire cover, and the spare tire itself. Next we're going to, need to remove the threshold that's at the very back, and we're going to have two push pins on the very edge, as well as one in the center. So I'm going to take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver. You're going to come to the little notch that's in them. You're going to pop out the center section of the push pin. And once you have the center popped out, we're going to remove the rest of the clip. And the one in the center is going to be just below and towards the passenger side of where our latch is. Once those push pins are removed, we're going to go ahead and gently lift towards the front of the car and up to remove the threshold panel. And we'll set it aside. On each side, we're going to have our tie down hook towards the top of our trunk. And we're going to remove these along with the other two push pins that are towards the inside of the trunk by the wheel well. In order to get that tie down hook off, we're going to take our trim panel tool or flathead screwdriver and we're going to pop out that center section again and then come behind the whole clip and it'll come out. And we'll do that for the other two push pins back here as well. With the push pins removed, we're going to pull back the carpet here so that we can get access to the wiring for our tail lights. Now if we pull it back and we find the wire that comes out of our tail light and we follow it back, we're going to find a white connector that it's going to be connected to. There's a little tab on the connector. If we push it, we should be able to disconnect it. And now we can grab our harness. Now our harness is going to match our vehicle's wiring harness. So we can take the male end and plug it into the tail light circuit. Make sure it locks in. And we can take the female end and plug it directly into the harness. Now we're going to take the green wire and route it along the threshold over to the passenger side and we're going to make the same connection over there. And we're going to tuck most of the wire towards the back and then we're going to secure that green wire to the existing wiring along the threshold with some zip ties that they include in our kit. Now before we mount our control box, we're going to come to our black wire. We're going to grab one of the included buck connectors in our kit and we're going to crimp it in place. Now this is going to be the power source for our converter box. We're going to run this up to the battery. They do provide us with a length of power wire so that we have enough to run it up to the battery. So we'll go ahead and strip back the end and crimp it onto the other end of the buck connector. 
I'm gonna wrap my power wire here. I'm gonna wrap the buck connector in some electrical tape just to help prevent any kind of corrosion or moisture from getting inside the connector. Our ground wire, they do provide us with a self-tapping screw. I'm gonna take a quarter inch nut driver and I'm gonna go directly into the sheet metal right here at the back. To secure our converter box, they do provide us with some double-sided foam tape. So we're gonna find a nice flat spot to mount it to. And if we come just to the inside of the trunk on the driver's side, we have a nice flat spot that we can mount it directly up on. We can remove the backing off the foam tape, put it directly on the converter box, remove the other side of the backing. We can press it firmly in place, making sure that it holds. We're gonna to have to get our power wire up to the battery. We got a couple different options of what we can do. We can go through the passenger compartment, going through the back seat, into the front, and going through the firewall, or we can find a grommet that's in the trunk, go right outside there, and run it underneath the car. That's what we're gonna do. So if we follow up towards the front of our trunk, we'll have a grommet that already has existing wires in it that we can pass our power wire through. The wiring is designed to stay on the car, so normally we would go ahead and put all of our panels back and just leave our four pole end in here at the trunk, and whenever we get ready to use it, we would just drop it out, making sure you stay away from the latch mechanism itself. But our customer has requested that we mount it on the outside of the vehicle for a more permanent connection at the hitch. So we're gonna find a grommet, pass it through, and then mount it to the hitch. There's a rubber plug right here in the center. If we remove it, should be able to pass our four pole down through. And you're gonna to wanna to keep the wire as flat as you can when you're going towards the center. So I'm gonna actually route it along the edge here and then have it come over so that it hopefully won't get damaged, won't get caught or rub when we put our spare back in or whenever we go to take it out. And then so that our grommet will fit, we're gonna cut a slit in the grommet so that the wire can pass through to the center. So you just take a pair of cutters, cut a straight line, so about the middle. So now that the grommet's cut, we'll go ahead and slide our wire to the middle, and then we can put the plug back in place. It's a little bit of a tight fit, so just gonna have to work our way around the plug, making sure that it snaps back in. And Kurt does provide you with some black silicone so we can seal up that grommet. But we already have some open, so we're gonna be using that. Now, if you need some extra, you can pick some up at eTrailer.com using part number LT37467. Now, since our wire is gonna be sticking up right here, I'm gonna take some duct tape. It's not included in our kit, and this isn't required, but it's just a good idea to have the wire attached to the floor that way it won't get caught we won't have to worry about it pulling up on it just take some tape and go along the wire and tape as much as we can securing it down with all the wires ran back here we can go ahead and put our trunk back together so we can start by putting our tie down hook back in place you want to push the outer section in and then push the center section in to lock it in place and the push pins are going to work the same way you want to make sure that that center section is still pulled out. And then push the center section to lock it in. We'll repeat that for all the remaining fasteners. We're going to put our threshold back in place. And make sure you have it lined up properly. And then we can push it in to lock all the clips in. Just make sure you get the weather stripping on the correct side. Go back to make sure it's going over the threshold. We can put our spare tire back and put all of our floor coverings back in place as well. Now since our wiring is gonna stay on the outside of our vehicle, we can pick up a couple brackets so that we can mount it securely to our hitch. We're gonna take the strap that's included with the bracket. This is just like a hose clamp. Just gonna go around the hitch. I'm going to take a 5 16 nut driver and tighten up that bolt until the clamp is nice and secure, holding the bracket in place. We're going to be mounting a four pole bracket to our short bracket here so we can take the hardware that's included in our bracket kit, 
drop the screws down from the top, take our four pole bracket, line up the holes, and we're going to take the nuts and secure it on the bottom. So I'm going to grab a 3 a socket and I'm going to tighten up the nuts that are holding the bracket in place. I'm going to wrap all the excess wiring that came out of the trunk in electrical tape to just help protect the wires and also hide those bright colored wires at the back of my car. So now I'm going to add my dust cover. We're going to slide it all the way back so it goes past those notches here. So if we come from the back side, we're just going to want to push our four pole through, give it a little wiggle up and down and left and right until those notches come out past the bracket here and it'll hold it secure in place whenever we go to plug our trailer in. And I'm just going to take a couple zip ties and secure the excess wire to the back of the hitch here so it won't be hanging down and catch on anything while we're driving. Now we can run our wire up to our battery. Everybody's gonna route it a little bit differently, but the only thing you really wanna pay attention to is you wanna stay away from any extreme heat sources like the exhaust or any moving components like the steering or suspension. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and then I'll show you how I routed it. So I routed my wire along the outside of the fuel tank here. I just zip tied it to some existing lines. And then again to the frame right here going through these two holes went around the fuel tank and slip tied it to some of these lines, just following it all the way down. I secured it to this subframe brace, and then I have it coming out right here. Now we're gonna need to move to the engine bay so we can get our wire up there. So I'm gonna take a piece of airline tube that I had laying around. You can use a coat hanger or a thick piece of wire that's just gonna hold its shape when you start pushing. And I'm gonna feed it down close to the firewall so that I can meet up with the wire down below and attach it to it. Now you just want to be careful again, staying away from any major heat sources, any moving parts. So I'm going to go down right by my brake master cylinder here and try to stay as close to the firewall as I can. That way I can bring my wire up and I don't have to worry about it moving around on me. So my airline tube came out right by these fuel lines right where I have my wire. So I'm going to take my airline tube, put my wire inside just a bit. I'm going to secure it with some electrical tape. I'm going to pull our airline tube up. And grab our wire. You want to make sure that you pull all the excess wire up and it doesn't get caught underneath the car because you don't want it ripping it out going down the road. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and double check underneath as well to make sure it didn't get wadded up. Now if we come back right behind our intake, we're gonna have that little metal tab right here that has a hole in it. And I'm actually gonna use that to secure my wire to make sure it doesn't fall back down and it'll keep tension on it, keeping it close to the firewall so I don't have to worry about it rubbing on anything. I'm going to run my wire underneath my air box and over towards the battery. That way, if I have to do any maintenance, I don't have to worry about that wire being in the way. I'm just go underneath the air filter there, underneath the air box over here, pull all the excess slack out, and we can zip tie it as we need to. We're going to estimate about how much wire we're going to need to get to our battery, but also keep in mind we're going to have a fuse holder. So if we cut our wire right about here, there should be plenty of room. We're going to strip back the end of our wire. We're going to crimp on another one of our yellow book connectors onto the end of it. On the other end of our book connector, we can take our fuse holder. Now these are already pre-stripped. Just pull the ends off, put the wire into our buck connector and crimp it in place. On the other end of our fuse holder, we're going to take the included ring terminal in our kit and crimp it in place. Now we can go ahead and remove the cover to our battery. So I'm going to grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove the nut. 
and take our ring terminal, slide it over the post, and then reinstall that nut. Now would be a good time to go ahead and secure that black wire, tie it up out of the way, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to wrap that buck connector in some electrical tape. So we can put our cover back in place. And our wire should fit right underneath. Then we can take our 10 amp fuse, put it in the fuse holder, and put the cover on. All we have left to do now is to test our wiring. So I have my four pole tester here. If you need one of these, you can pick one up at eTrailer.com using part number I26. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Then I'll run the lights and verify that all the signals are working. If I turn on my headlights, we can see that it's working as well as the left turn signal, right turn signal, and the brakes. Now we're ready to hook up to our trailer and hit the road. And then I'll finish up your look at the Kurt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 56022 on our 2014 Nissan Maxima.